So yeah, you've been with ROH for a while now. So uh, you know, you've been to places like uh, Japan through the relations with ROH. How is Japan for you? You mentioned Mexico. How was that, um, you know, to go down south? And, you know, what was the wrestling, the culture like? Well, I mean, it was completely different from Japan in almost every sense of the, the, um, the word. Uh, you know, Mexico is, is especially Mexico City, uh, Guadalajara. They're, they're more, you know, the heavily populated cities with, with some uh, poverty. So, you know, some situations might not be the cleanest locations where in Japan everything is immaculate. And, uh, you know, the, the fans in Japan might be a little quieter and, and kind of get loud out of respect for certain uh, moments where in Mexico these are the most passionate fans in the world. And as you're walking out and so you walk back through the curtain, they're yelling and screaming and, and uh, you know, ringing their cowbells and all sorts of different things. Uh, and the style uh, itself, you know, from from things being done on the opposite sides of the body to uh, just the Lucha Libre style is so completely different than what we see here in the States and in Japan. Uh, it takes a little bit getting used to, but it's just another uh, point of pride for myself to be able to say, like, you know, I, I went down and learned Lucha and succeeded there and, and uh, added that, that tool uh, onto my tool belt. Yeah, very cool. Um, you mentioned a little bit about the Japanese fans being a little bit, you know, more quiet sometimes. Um, did that throw you off at all? Um, you know, because in America, um, you know, in Mexico, it's you know very loud, but in Japan, it's it's more reserved. So, did that throw you off at all? Uh, a little bit here and there, but for the most part, you get used to it. Uh, learning to kind of make things or do things to react in, in certain. Uh, ways and certain situations, but uh, it's one of those things that you, you kind of adjust for. But definitely the first time, you know, when you're in like a court and hall and you're so excited, uh, and, and then it gets a little bit quiet, you're like, oh, okay, all right, I was told about this, and uh, you know, it just makes you almost that much more exciting when when they start to kind of uh, get back into it because it's normally not like a a big cheer, it's more like a, ooh, and ah, it, it's like their first kind of sense of, um, uh, of a reaction uh, for the crowd. So it, it definitely, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's exciting at the same time. Uh, but again, I always think back to the fact that I'm a giant wrestling fan and have been my entire life, and so I've watched these audiences you know, whether it's a VHS tape back in the day or, you know, on the internet now. And uh, something that I I was definitely coming in ready for uh, and, and also exciting to experience. How was it wrestling in uh, Corrigan Hall? You know, Corrigan Hall uh, sometimes talked about as the MSG of Japan. So how was it um, in that arena? I mean, it was definitely something, you know, that I, I, long time now and says check that one off was a big sense of accomplishment but my very first night in Japan was in Corgan Hall um, and it's so funny because like you know you, you see these places you know uh, on video for so long that they, they have like these grand kind of feels to them in your mind and you expect these places to be so big uh, and Corgan Hall is not the biggest place in the world so even you know, the first night I did my dive and I flew so far and almost ended up in the crowd. 
because, you know, it's, it's kind of a confined space in there. But what a magical atmosphere. There's really not a lot of places like it. You know, I always say Arena Mexico is probably my favorite place in the world to wrestle, but uh, it, it's not far down the list that Corgan Hall would be up there as well. Cool, yeah. And then another legendary arena where you wrestled and won the ROH uh, you know, World Championship at the G1 Supercard was MSG Madison Square Garden. How was uh, the whole experience uh, from you know winning the belt and being at MSG uh, that night? I mean, it's one of those things that as a kid, and again, uh, a kid that's a giant wrestling fan, you almost like imagine uh, from a small age, like, oh, and here I am in Madison Square Garden, and, and I win the world title, and, you know, I climb to the top of the ladder and win the world title, and then for it to actually happen like that uh, is, is such an amazing experience, and something that I'll, I'll be forever grateful for, uh, but at the same time, I still don't feel like um, I've ever sat down and really enjoyed it. You know, you, you almost kind of watch it back um, and think of all the things like, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that, or this is going to happen, or that's going to happen. But I haven't really had a chance to, to slow down ever since winning the title, so there hasn't been really a, a time to kind of smell the roses, as they say. But I'm sure one day that uh, <laughs> one day that, that accomplishment will kind of put itself in perspective for me. Um, and, and I'll be able to look at it as probably one of the greatest moments of my life. Um, and, and really, you know, driving home from Madison Square Garden, uh, I'm from Boston, so it's a, a short drive up 95. And uh, it was really then when you kind of tie yourself with your thoughts that you're like, man, I, I really won the world title in Madison Square Garden. And you're like, this is what you've always wanted, like forever. So it's, uh, it, that, those moments are cool. At the same time, I don't think it's it's still I still don't think it's fully sunk in yet. That's cool. Um, your next major challenge is uh, Death Before Dishonor with uh, Ruth. What can fans expect from that match? Well, I mean, me and Ruth have uh, met numerous times in Mexico, um, and Ruth is one of the most hard hitting superstars that we have, not just in Ring of Honor but in all the world. And if anyone is familiar with the stuff that we did in Mexico, uh, they would know that the two of us, when we get in the ring together, we're, we're going full steam at one another. Uh, and it, it's definitely a, a, a hard-hitting match, you know, a little less than us, a little more uh, in-your-face intensity. And uh, I think that if anyone was familiar with our stuff that we did in Mexico against one another, you're going to expect that tenfold here in Ring of Honor because, like we talked about, there's a long road for me to become the world champion. And, uh, you know, that, that fairy tale moment when it happened was something that will live in history, but at the same time, being a, a wrestling um, historian as, as I am, I know that you know, wrestling is all about longevity and legacy. And uh, working as hard as I did and having that moment finally happen, um, it, it's going to be over my dead body that I'm going to let it end uh, in, in Las Vegas. So, Rush, you can in for the match of his life um, against someone that he's familiar with, but someone that I don't think that he realizes just how much of this moment means to him. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the entire pay-per-view and, and that match specifically. Um, so, yeah, it's, it'll be great to watch. And, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me about all this. No, thank you, bro. Yeah.